the licensed Creative Commons Zero, better known as CC Zero, is a really popular license for putting works of art like music, drawings, 3D models, and things like that into what is colloquially called the public domain. But it also gets used in the context of software. But there is a growing concern that it's not really a suitable license when we are talking about code. And recently, the Fedora project put out a statement about exactly this. CC0 has been listed by Fedora as a good license for code and content, corresponding to allowed and allowed content under the new system. We plan to classify CC0 as allowed content only so that CC0 would no longer be allowed for code. So if we're talking about things like wallpapers or themes or models for an AI program, things like that, that could be CC0. But if we're talking about a software project, that can't be CC0. This is a fairly unusual change, more on why that's not exactly the case in a moment, and may have an impact on a non-trivial number of Fedora packages. That is not clear to me right now. And we may grant a carve-out for existing packages that include CC0 covered code. While we're moving towards a process in which license approvals are going to be done primarily through the Fedora license data repository on GitLab, I wanted to note this on the mailing list because of the significance of this change. Now, the reason why I say it's not really that unusual is they literally have a wiki page explaining the good and bad licenses in Fedora and whether they're compatible with GPL and things like that. And this right here is the bad list. As you can see, the list isn't exactly short. I guess the unusual part is that CC0 is generally treated by some people as a good code license. Now, this isn't something Fedora and Red Hat decided to do literally out of nowhere. This is one of the very, very rare occasions where both the Free Software Foundation and the Open Source Initiative actually agree on something. And when they agree on something, it's generally fair to say that it's probably the case. So in both of their FAQs, they explain CC0, and their opinions are basically the same thing. I'm not going to read the entire thing, the main focus is the middle paragraph. If you want to release your non-software work to the public domain, we recommend you use CC0. For works of software, it is not recommended, as CC0 has a term expressly stating it does not grant you any patent licenses. As for the OSI, back in 2012, Creative Commons applied for CC0 to be an open source license, and while CC0 was not explicitly rejected, the License Review Committee was unable to reach a consensus that it should be approved, and Creative Commons eventually withdrew the application. The most serious of the concerns raised had to do with the effects of the clause 4A, which reads, No patent rights held by a firm are waived, abandoned, surrendered, licensed, or otherwise affected by this document. While many open source licenses simply do not mention patents, it is exceedingly rare for open source licenses to explicitly disclaim any conveyance of patent rights, and the committee felt that approving such a license would set a dangerous precedent and possibly even weaken patent infringement offences available to users of software released under CC0. The funnier part about this is that Creative Commons has also discussed this in two separate FAQs. Their opinion, though, is a little bit different. So, while the general Creative Commons licenses aren't really suitable for code, not because they're inherently bad licenses, but licenses by the FSF and OSI have terms in them that are made specifically based around software, they do say that CC0 public domain dedication is GPL compatible and acceptable for software. So this does differ a little bit, but over on the CC0 FAQ, they say this. Yes, CC0 is suitable for dedicating your copyright and related rights in computer software to the public domain to the full extent possible under the law. Unlike CC licenses, which should not be used for software, CC0 is compatible with many software licenses, including the GPL. However, CC0 has not been approved by the OSI and does not license or otherwise affect any patent rights you may have. You may want to consider using an approved OSI license that does so instead of CC0, such as GPL3, Apache 2.0, or anything else that might be out there. Their stance isn't as hard as the FSF or the OSI, 
but they do still mention the patent problem. So when we're talking about works that do not have a patent, CC0 is a great license. So the way the public domain is defined in different countries is very different. And some countries simply don't have the concept of a public domain. So public domain is colloquially used to mean throwing your rights away to whatever the work is, whether it's music, art, or anything else like that, so that anybody is just completely free to use it. And when patents aren't involved, CC0 is an amazing license. When they are, though, it has a specific clause against that. Under 4A in limitations and disclaimers, no trademark or patent rights held by a firma are waived, abandoned, surrendered, licensed, or otherwise affected by this document. So if you have a patent over some part of the code and then license the code base under CC0, then you maintain exclusive ownership over that patent. Compare this to something like GPLv3, for example, under section 11 on patents. Each contributor grants you a non-exclusive, worldwide, royalty-free patent license under the contributor's essential patent claims to make, use, sell, offer for sale, import, and otherwise run, modify, and propagate the contents of its contributor's version. Under GPLv3, Apache 2.0, MIT, and a bunch of other licenses, basically everybody has the patent. This is the problem with CC0. Let's play through a bit of an example. Let's say you make a software project and license it under GPLv3, MIT, BSD3 clause, or even make it proprietary, it doesn't matter how you license it. And you see this library out there that's going to be crucial to your project, and that library is licensed under CC0. Unknown to you though, a part of that library contains patented code, and you're going along doing stuff for a couple of years, and your project becomes really, really popular. And then out of nowhere, the author of that library and owner of that patent starts demanding you pay royalties for using their patented code. And if you don't pay them royalties, they threaten to sue you. Now this person is what we call in the industry as an ass. but even though that might be the case, from a legal perspective, they are probably in the right. They have an exclusive patent to that code, and you agreed to use CC0 license code that doesn't give you access to their patent. This is an incredibly difficult position to defend. I don't know if you could defend it. You could probably, like, wait out the trial until they ran out of money. But if this was a big company or someone that had a lot of resources that was trying to infect various projects with CC0 license code, there's not really much that you can do about it. Now, don't take that as me saying that all CC0 license code is trying to destroy FOSS. There are a lot of great developers out there that just released the CC0 because they frankly don't care about it. They don't have a patent, they just want it to be in the public domain. And for those people, it's great. But there is going to be those cases where it can be exploited. The question then becomes, is this actually a situation that you should really be concerned with? Is anybody out there willing to actually exploit the problem? I don't know. I genuinely don't know. But Red Hat has a lot of corporate customers and doesn't really want to risk it. Now, Fedora is by no means the only distro out there that makes the distinction between code licenses and content licenses, and has also discussed CC0. Debian, for example, has done the exact same thing in the past. It wasn't until 2017 that Debian allowed CC0 for things like documentation, themes, and things like that. And I wouldn't be surprised if other distros that care a lot about what licenses are available in their repos basically start to follow suit, and many of them already have, Fedora is just the most recent example, and definitely one of the bigger examples. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you think this decision on CC0 was a good thing, or do you think it was kind of an overreach for a non-existent problem? And if you write code, do you use CC0? Do you think CC0 is bad for code? What do you think? Let me know. So if you like this video, I'm gonna go and like the video. If you really like the video and you wanna become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my uh, Patreon, subscribe to the video page, link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Opton Plays. 
that's going to be it for me, and I'm out.